The Stroop effect is a type of delay in our perception. For example, while you can instantly read red text that's printed in blue, it takes a bit longer to perceive and name the colour of the text. The reason is that the colours of the words and their meaning don't match the visual signals arriving at the brain. This incompatibility slows down the brain's decision making. The Stroop effect was first discussed by researchers in Germany in 1929, but it's named after the American psychologist John Ridley Stroop, who wrote about his study of it in 1935. According to the Stroop effect, we can easily read the names of colours such as red, blue and yellow, regardless of the colour in which they're written. But when we try to name the colours, it's harder and takes more time. For the test to be meaningful, the words need to be in your native language or in a second language that you can speak fluently. If you don't speak, for example, Spanish, you won't experience the Stroop effect, since in this case you don't know the meaning of the words. There won't be any incompatibility between your perception of the words and the colours in which they're written. Try the test yourself and see what happens. And there you have it, the Stroop Effect. Several theories have been put forward to explain the Stroop Effect. According to one, the brain automatically understands the meaning of words because of our long-time habit of reading, but recognising colours isn't an automatic process. Since automatic processes are faster, we can read the words faster than name the colours. Another theory claims that the brain reads words faster than it recognises colours because there's a lag while the brain recognises the colour. In psychology, the Stroop effect can be used to measure interference that occurs in the brain, and so it can help in diagnosing certain mental conditions or types of brain injury. Studies have shown, for instance, that schizophrenics tend to suffer more from this kind of perceptual interference, so the Stroop test can be used as an indicator of schizophrenia. Since the 1930s, variations of the Stroop test have been developed, for example for measuring a person's emotional state, related groups of words such as pain, fear and hopelessness can be shown to a patient who is then asked to name the colours of the words. The test is repeated with emotionally neutral words like door, clock and paper. The time differences in response are measured and then used to assess the patient's frame of mind. It's interesting how something as simple as the colours in which words are written can provide such insights into the workings of our brains. <laughs>